Welcome to Diet Triad. Why buy when you can make? I'm Patrick Dorton. And I'm Michael Hand. So Patrick, hypothetical emergency situation for you. Okay. Okay, you're stuck in your house in a snowstorm. All the power's out, all of your devices are dead, but you need to charge your phone to make a phone call. I hate this. Yes. Okay, all you have is aquarium supplies and a full bladder. Not one of the seven emergency power generators that I own and then use the restroom? No, that would be for someone that's prepared. <laughs> I this, am prepared! In this situation, I would make a homemade battery. Okay, first of all, <laughs> where are you gonna get that many lemons and why a fish tank? <laughs> so, not gonna make a lemon battery. That's what everyone thinks of when they think right. of homemade battery. I have a lemon tree in my backyard with like 50 lemons on it right now. So that, you can make good voltage with that. Everyone's mm -hmm. done the science experiment where you well, take a lemon. And if you use magnesium electrodes, you get like a volt, volt and a half. Yeah, um, that's true. But the problem is you only get like maybe one milliamp out of that when you need way more to power, power actual devices. Right. So instead, the reason why I brought up an aquarium is because we're gonna use, we're gonna make a homemade battery, but we're gonna use activated carbon, which is pretty common in aquarium sort of things. You can get this at a fish uh, store or just a pet store. And yeah, it's just, in this case, it's just little pellets of carbon pretty much. And then in this one, it's kind of not as uniform pellets, but right. just little things. So what we're gonna be making is called an aluminum air battery. Ooh. So these are pretty cool because they do about the same voltage output mm -hmm. as a lemon battery. The real advantage is you get hundreds of times more amperage out of them. So the cool thing, right, is instead of needing acid, which is like shredding lemons or lemon juice, yeah. or, you know, because you got acid in the basement because you do things with bodies, <laughs> um, you, all you need is your urine. Because, well, it must be, so it's a salt battery, not an acid battery. Yeah, so you need salt to transfer ions. Okay. And Technically, urine has salt in it. Right. So we could use urine. Want me to go? No. <laughs> we could use urine, but I assume you probably have salt at home as well. So I do. I would rather just use salt water. Okay. But in a crazy emergency and you happen to have these supplies, I right. guess it would probably work. And I'm, you know, not nearly as squeamish about urine as you are. <laughs> Children! Yeah. I will survive the zombie apocalypse because I am not afraid of poo. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. All you need is activated carbon, some paper towels, some foil, some salt water, and some wire. Awesome. All right, so let's make an example battery. Okay. So what you need is, first you wanna have some salt water. I don't, there is an exact amount of salt that you actually need. Um, it just has to have salt in it. Okay. The Exploratorium article that I'm going off of basically said, just, just add some salt. So a cup of seawater, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Okay, so once you have the salt water, so what I did is I cut the, the banks in two thirds mm -hmm. because you're gonna have a huge battery if you use a whole paper towel. I like the idea of using a whole paper towel. But if we're making an example one, we can use a whole entire thing. <laughs> so what you do is you take your paper towel, you dump it into your salt water solution just to get it wet. Do you want it like saturated or just damp? Uh, I think just damp is fine. Okay. So then you go ahead and put it on top of your foil here. Then you get your activated carbon. So I liked this one. This package was from Amazon. The crushed up one. I like it better because it was cheaper than the, the pet store one. And also it's crushed up, so it's a more little bit. More surface area. Yeah. That's it? You don't want to add more? If you want to add more, sure. Let's add more. <laughs> so you, <laughs> if you can avoid getting the carbon on the foil, Sorry. it's probably better. Okay. All right, so once you have it on there, you wanna dampen the carbon in there. All right. And then next, you wanna add your actual piece of wire. And the more copper you expose, the better this works. Yeah, that was one thing that I noticed. The voltage stays the same if you have more uh, copper exposed to it, but the amperage goes up. I don't know if there's a limit to it, but it seems to go up way... All right. I'm just saying. <laughs> sure, if you want to do more. It, it seems to go up way more the more wire you have exposed. Well, it's also really funny, right, because this consumes, especially the copper, like this is one you were using before, and the copper is incredibly tarnished, and it's starting to get brittle and so small. I, I don't know if it's tarnished or if that's just because it was inside of... Charcoal? Charcoal, <laughs> and it just turned black. I'm gonna call that sort of tarnished. Chemical reactions, dude. So a battery, by the way, if you aren't familiar with it, turns, um, 
stored chemical energy into electrical energy, and there are about a billion ways to skin this particular cat. There are apparently only one way to skin this wire, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> I would just give up. But well, so we have some so, more copper exposed now. Okay, <laughs> so the way this battery is working is it's taking, it's oxidizing the aluminum, and then it's taking oxygen from the inside of the carbon, the activated carbon is full of just little pockets of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So it's taking the oxygen from the inside and then I guess transferring the ions or something. Do we want this to be relatively sealed? I don't think it matters, but they say, I think it's just like a messiness thing mm -hmm. that you just fold over the aluminum. So now we have the wire inside of there and touching the carbon, but not touching the outside foil. Okay. And in theory, if we did this correctly, if we connect one, I have a multi-tester set up here. Can you bear the excitement, people? So this I have is... one wire hooked up to the aluminum foil, and then the other one is hooked up to there, and we're getting... Nothing? Nothing, but I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> and we're getting 0.9 two volts about. So basically we're getting a volt. Getting a volt. And the interesting thing about these is that the more you push down on them, the more voltage and more amperage you get. Until so, it goes lower. Yeah, so compression can be pretty important here. So just no compression, we're at 0.4 amps and pushing down Whoa. we're getting 1.2 amps there. See, I told you we needed to get more copper and more <laughs> charcoal. You're right. Oh yeah. Okay, one, I want two. I want two amps. 1.7. And we're not going to get it. No. <laughs> so as you can see, that's plenty to power a cell phone. Oh my goodness, that's more than it. So a standard USB port s provides 500 milliamps or 0.5 amps. So that's basically, that's enough to keep an iPad charged. Yeah, just sitting no compression, it's at 0.4. So right. that could probably trickle charge something as well. That's really cool. So you would need five of these connected in series. Yes. No. In series or parallel? In series, parallel. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> series, so uh, yeah. quick electrical things. So series, when you connect like the positive to the negative, right. like how batteries are, that ups the voltage. If you do them in parallel, so all the positives are in one side right. and all the negatives are another, that's amperage, which you knew already, but for you guys, <laughs> if, if you did know. I can do it until I think about it, then I can't do it. Yeah, so I happen to have Dun, dun, dun. A whole bank of batteries that I set up. And basically what I did is I put them in parallel, or in, nope, in series. So it's all connected together. So basically the inside wire connects to the foil outside of the next one next to it. And there's some sweet B-roll of me setting this up. 20 bucks says you were watching Breaking Bad on Netflix while you were doing this. It does have that vibe a little bit. Lots of, I don't know, packets or, it's just something about it wiring things together. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix is our sponsor. Netflix.com slash DIY. You should definitely check them out if you haven't done it. Amazing way to catch up on television series. They have some great original programming and I'm really excited about House Cards season two that's coming soon and of course all the movies you can bear and 4K content coming yes. soon. Yes. All right, let's get back to building. So all connected? They're all connected or they should be at least. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> brace yourselves. Holy crap. Cool. Yeah, that's so. That's like five volts. Yeah. Five volts, and that's if I push down on some of them, we can force can we it make to be a stack even more. of them, like a giant sandwich of them. I think it'll short out if we do that. Okay. Let's see. No, it's gonna short out. Okay. That's still pretty awesome. Yeah. So this, in theory, is plenty to power a cell phone. Okay. So obviously, there's only one way to test the emergency power theory. We've got five volts out of this. Yep. The amperage is kind of unknown. They've been sitting around for a while, so they may have kind of. May have tapered off a bit, but. So this is a basically USB pigtail. And uh, just chopped off the end. And could, well, it's kind of funny, right? The, there's two data pins, there's two power pins, and conveniently enough, we have a red and a black. Yep. So, so. if we don't do this backwards. <laughs> That's why we're using an old Windows phone that we don't like. <laughs> why you gotta be a hater, man? Here, you plug that in. All right, hold well, on, I'm gonna. You take the pigtail. I got the end okay. of the pigtail. Plugged in, and we have power. Holy crap. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so excited when stuff works. Really surprising that I worked first try, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, science. I got a lemon tree in the backyard. I love the lemon battery experience. This is so much cooler because there's so much more vis like physical evidence of 
the fact of the that, science. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look at this. We are consuming chemical materials. You got electricity. Yeah. You're powering things. Um, and not just like little tiny LEDs. Really good experiment. Also, you know, to get your kids using a multimeter. We explained how to use a multimeter last week. Um, this is really exciting. I just love science. Science is good. Science in every way. Science makes me happy. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and if you build one of these projects, do us a favor, tweet at us at DIYTryon or email DIYTryon at revision3.com. And we'd love to hear your project ideas, your builds. Share with us what you're doing and we'll share it with the entire Die Trying audience. Yeah. And make sure to subscribe on iTunes or DIYTrying.com. Oh my goodness. We have a lot of cleaning up to do. Yeah, there's carbon everywhere. My there's hands. also that jar of urine in the back. You didn't touch that, did you? That was urine? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Things we do for science. I'm not peeing in a bucket for nothing. Oh! In case you were wondering, we tried it, and urine does work. Got urine?